I'm like most ufologists, I'm interested in a lot of different phenomena. So I find what I find really interesting, some of the actual phenomena from ghosts and poltergeists will actually occur in the UFO cases, which the UFO people will ignore, of course. And then some of the UFO phenomena will leak into the ghost field too, with this, you know, cross pollinate with different things, and the the ghost hunters and busters ignore that too. So unfortunately, whatever this, whatever is behind the actual phenomena, is a lot more deep and weirder and stranger than just ET is here and abducting farmers over and over again. There's a hell of a high strangeness attached to a lot of the subject. And um, instead of boring people with saying, trying to make up ridiculous excuses of what I think it means, I've got no idea because that's the gist of it. Unlike other fields, if you study rocks or become a carpenter or whatever, the more information you know, the more skilled you know, you more you know, the stronger conclusions you become, you have you're more knowledgeable. Within this field, if you're really if you're being brutally honest, the more you learn, the less you know. But most people aren't honest. So people go, when I they'll say, What do you think this is? And I go, I've no idea. And they think it's really odd that I say that and a surprise. And I go, well, it's not surprising, you're just being brutally honest. And the other thing is too, neither myself nor Damien for instance too. We don't have to explain what the phenomena is. We have to explain what the phenomena isn't. And a lot of times, if we're not dealing with something that's prosaic, like a flare or a balloon or whatever, then we're, there's no onus on us to be forced to say, we think that's ET, we think that's Martians, we think that's Earthlights. There's no onus on all, we don't have to. That's for other people to do. The, the onus from us is primarily to try and record the phenomena honestly, and separate it from the noise factor. That's all it is. And I don't think we'll ever go beyond that anyway. From my perspective, Damon's captured more material of great interest than Bigelow and all these hundreds of millions of dollars in scientists. So far, I've seen a couple of their anecdotes and nothing. So they can keep bragging and claiming they've cracked the, the, cracked the code and they've got all this stuff. But unless you release, it doesn't mean anything. And then later on, we saw uh, what looked like a, a red beach ball across the valley appear on top of a, a cherry red beach ball appear on top of the pine trees. And um, I pointed to him and said, what the hell is that? And we, he said, I don't know. And it lasted for about four seconds and switched off. I was fiddling around on his right and he was bent over doing something. And I saw a, a piece of light about this long, about that thick, um, go over his, uh, past his left elbow and melt into the ground near his left foot and he jumped back and yelled, what the hell was that? Um, with Damien, because I consider him like a modern day Ted Sirios or Stella Lansing, those sort of people, for whatever reason, phenomena happens around him. Now, we don't know why. Now, he has the, cap the ability to capture on multiple 
instruments like video cameras and stills and multiple witnesses can see it and also film it so that sort of destroys the whole uh, idea of him being delusional or mad because it, it, it'd have to be a group delusion as well when they were all filming and doing that sort of thing. Uh, I hope but doubt that it'll be investigated by someone scientific one day, but I don't see that happening, unfortunately, because the real phenomena no one's interested in, they're interested in stories, fabrications, hoaxes and garbage. 